everyone, and welcome to our ongoing educational series entitled Pet Tumor Board. In this series, we present real-world cases, mostly drawn directly from my own clinical practice, with the goal of highlighting practical scenarios and extracting meaningful, applicable learning points. Joining me for today's Tumor Board are several renowned experts in their respective fields. Dr. Dan Petrolak, a medical oncologist from Yale. Dr. Sharif Gami, a nuclear medicine physician from UC San Diego. Dr. Wayne Brisbane, a urologic oncologist from UCLA. And finally, Dr. Sean Collins, a radiation oncologist from the University of South Florida. None of our participants have reviewed these cases in advance, thus ensuring fresh, candid insights. So let's dive in. So our first case is a 55-year-old, extremely healthy television sportscaster. He had a rise in his PSA in 2018 to 4.5. He was on testosterone replacement therapy, did biopsies, had Gleason 9 and 1 in 19 cores. He had uh, Gleason 7, 347, and 2 of 12. At that time, the uh, bone scans and CPs, conventional imaging was done, which were negative, not surprising. He underwent a radical prostatectomy several months later in February 19th. Gleason 9, extra prostatic extension, negative margins, negative seminal vesicles and nodes. So uh, right after the surgery, about six weeks, his PSA was undetectable. And from 2019 until recently, uh, he had sort of the trifecta of continent, potent, and an undetectable PSA. Interestingly, at the time, he was offered clinical trials and other things to radiation, hormones to treat his uh, high-grade prostate cancer and chose to the these uh, surveillance and actually did well. Uh, he is in the community and around the state and uh, on his national broadcasting has been very vocal about early detection of prostate cancer. Unfortunately, recently, his, over a period of 18 months, his PSA rose uh, to 0.14. So let me ask Dr. Brisbane, what's the next step in this guy? Yeah, I think, you know, there's, uh, thankfully, he's had a, a nice long time. Uh, so you'd, you'd assume that his PSA were more likely to have a recurrence in the prostate bed. I would probably order a PSMA. Um, there, It's unlikely to be positive at such a low level of PSA, but um, I find for three reasons. A, if for chance he does have a lymph node, we can target it early while this, the, the tumors are small. B, uh, guys have a lot of trouble just watching this. It, it can be really difficult to just continue to watch the PSA go up and wait for some threshold. And it's unclear to me if, you know, 0 0.2 is better than 0 0.14. And then the final reason is um, if he does have a negative PSMA, there's some nice data coming out of the Australian cohort that shows that that's probably a, a good time to irradiate, and uh, especially with his prior disease being quite aggressive. But uh, but that's uh, that's what I would go with a PSMA up front. All right. Um, anybody think any differently? Um, I wouldn't think differently, but I would just add to Dr. Brisbane's comment is that even if the PSMA scan is negative, you'll have a good baseline, like a subcentimeter sized lymph node that we don't see it to be PSMA avid at this time might look a little different six months from now or eight months from now. So okay. So uh, what happened was. We put in orders when I saw him on 10-4 for a post-luna scan in Denver, where he's located. They're, they did not have that. He was supposed to get that in Fort Collins, Colorado. And then for the next five months, six months, it was a battle to try to get the PSMA scan approved. This is uh, to the right is extracted from a letter he received in um, early May that his request again we spent a lot of time on the phone with uh with uh interactions with the insurance company it's not covered they said and it doesn't meet evacor's guidelines the reason was the psa requirement not met you needed level of 0.5 or greater post treatment from their standpoint and medical necessity not satisfied under evacor oncology imaging guidelines 
I googled EvaCore Oncology Imaging Guidelines and couldn't find anything. So he was, um, I talked, and that's, this was over a 20-minute discussion with a board-certified general surgeon, um, and he kept throwing this back at me, and I mentioned some of the things that, uh, that Wayne Brisbane mentioned. And the, the conclusion was, next step, speak with your provider about this decision and possible alternatives. Okay. Um, any comments on that? You know, the... I make one comment? Oops. Okay. I'd like to make a comment. I mean, so 0 0.5, the chance of having a positive scan at you know, below 0 0.5 is at least 20%, 30%, or 40%. The earlier, as a radiation oncologist, the earlier we treat these people, the better chance we have of curing them. Totally. So why the hell would I wait till a PSA of higher than 0 0.5? Totally. And that's sort of... Also, what... He also has a pretty good baseline. You know, he's, he's not having a lot of symptoms, he's got the trifecta. So... You know, Dr. Collins could probably offer him a cure with not not too much setbacks in his side effects. You know, the, the other the other situation I've seen, which I think is a waste of healthcare money, is the insistence of some insurance companies to do a standard CT scan and bone scan yeah, right. <laughs> prior to doing a PSMA PET scan, which is a complete waste of money. It is. So that that's uh, been, I think I've had it happen about three or four different times. Yeah. Uh, we, we come across these challenges and denials, and, um, and I mean, this is not necessarily the right forum for it, but if the patient has had any questionable finding on a dedicated CT or MRI, like a bone finding that's questionable, it sometimes helps with that and getting that authorized. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good, uh, thing to know. When, as I mentioned, this guy is, uh, Dick, is his name is Dick Lombardi, and, um, I have his permission to discuss his case here in his name. He's out in the public about prostate cancer. He was on the front cover of Avid Golfer. Vic is a 30-time, 30 32-time time Emmy Award-winning broadcaster and prostate cancer survivor. He's uh, come to a lot of events from promoting early detection and so forth. And in this story, which is uh, on the next page, at, 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 at sort of tooting my own horn that, that talked about Dr. Crawford being his doctor and Dr. Crawford talking about um, that the new advances, particularly uh, precisely determining who is at risk of disease and where it is located in their body. And part of that was this discussion was his battle trying to get the uh, PSMA scan approved. Well, two days after this came out, it was approved. And now at, uh, at the report is no definite recurrence radio tracer, uh, negative Abbott disease, uh, had some bladder wall thickening. So the question is now, I mean, we, there's a lesson in that we're fighting a lot of battles with, uh, with uh, reimbursement. It, you know, some of it's true. It may, we may be overusing it. So the question is, when do we repeat this or what do we do with him? My answer to this question, um, to me, he, um, in my opinion, he needs radiation. Um, he has a rising PSA. This is the best chance to cure him. Uh, PSMA scans are not perfect. They, it has to be a half centimeter in size to see something. He probably has microscopic disease throughout his uh, prostatic bed. And to me, radiating him now, I think would give him the best long-term chance of cure. Uh, but I'd love to hear the other panelist members what they have to say. Yeah, I would agree with the radiation therapy, but the other possibility is that his tumor does not make PSMA. And yeah. we know that about 90% of prostate cancers do make PSMA, but 10% don't. So that may be the reason why we're seeing a negative scan in this situation. Sure. That brings up a good point. Should we do another type of scan, uh, Oximum scan or something like that on him? Um, I mean, an Axiomen scan in terms of what its FDA approval is for is for patients with recurrent disease. And so this patient would definitely fit that, that, that sort of description, except, I mean, if, if you're concerned about osseous lesions, then, um, then probably the answer to the Axiomen is no. But if you're looking for soft tissue lesions, uh, sub-centimeter size, potentially, and, and here's, here's where I would maybe just kind of take a leap of faith, but. You know, there are PET-MR scanners out there. 
they're expensive and they're expensive to find, but there's no reason why we can't use software to fuse an MRI and a uh, PSMA, say, um, PET CT or PSMA scan with MR. And maybe that would be another way that you could potentially look for soft tissue local recurrence. So here's this PSA history right here. As you can see, it, it uh, is uh, the, the one just uh, two days ago is now 0.14, which is still pretty low, right? So what? It, so one of the options I hear from a radiation oncologist, the radiation, not surprising. Uh, uh, what, Wayne? What would you do? You know, I actually do think I would probably offer him radiation. I we obviously could. Um, we could. He would have imaging negative uh, biochemical recurrence, so you would, he'd be a, a candidate for some some um, anti uh, anti androgens. Um, so we, that would be an option. Probably not something I've seen guys do usually at this point, but uh, but a possibility. Um, or you can continue to watch and uh, and offer him a PSMA at some interval, maybe in about six months and just or or three months, just see what the PSA is. But uh, again, it's a pretty nice window where you could offer a cure. So, so uh, uh, certainly radiation is a, is a strong option at this point. The question is, I think he's also at reasonable risk of having unrecognized micrometastatic disease somewhere, and I wonder if something more systemic might be part of it or appropriate, like monotherapy with a anti-androgen. Dan, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think six months of ADT, two months before, and then four months after the radiation therapy would be would not be unreasonable. But I guess the other question would be is how extensive a radiation field you want to go forth with. Do you want to just radiate the bed? Do you want to include the nodes as well? So I, I think that, that we all know that radiation and ADT synergize. And he's young. He has a fairly good chance of having his testosterone recover if we go with a drug like Regulolix. So I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other issue is radiation is not without long-term side effects 10 years from now and so forth. And he's 50, uh, in his 50s, and you wonder about that too. Well, so the, right now the plan is uh, to uh, watch the PSA a little bit and um, repeat repeat the scan. Uh, Sharif, would you get uh, try to get a postluma scan, or would you do something different? I think I would do a postluma scan. That would be my first choice in terms of the PSMA scan. But if again, if there's any way that you might get an MRI by by the time you get that PSMA scan, I think a a fused PET MR would be also helpful. Great. Well, that's a, a lot of uh, important things here. One, we learned something about that approval and then the various triggers and, and uh, the number of opinions about what to do with somebody that's low in PSA and a negative scan. Thank you all for your time.